Well, a little bit warmer this afternoon with the help of the sunshine. The best day of the week is yet to come. Your forecast in just a few minutes. She was once this and now this and she is doing this. I'm going to take you inside a very special exhibition of women of a certain age that shows resilience, longevity and relevance. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, new buyout offers to thousands of employees at the automaker Stellantis. It is a move the UAW calls a slap in the face. Local 4 has confirmed the voluntary buyouts are being offered to more than 33,000 salaried and hourly workers in the U.S. Packages will be mailed to the workers affected in the next seven days. Employees will need to make their decisions and sign up between May 6th and June 19th. Now, they would be separated from the company between the end of June and December of this year. The UAW says the company shouldn't be pushing to cut jobs while making billions in profits. Tonight at 5, this offer could have ripple effects on UAW negotiations later this year. Business editor Rob Maloney digs into the impact at 5. The police chief in Westland has resigned after some old videos emerged showing him verbally harassing and humiliating citizens while on the job. And the city's mayor says both sides decided cocaine. it was in the best interest in of residents for, for Chief Jeff Jedrzejczyk to step down. Mayor Michael Lando says the police department is dedicated to build strong relationships with residents going forward. Now, in an effort to prepare for the worst, the city of Detroit launched a full-scale emergency exercise downtown today. This exercise simulated a complex coordinated attack against multiple sports venues in the district Detroit with Comerica, Little Caesars Arena and Ford Field all within one mile of one another and made for a unique opportunity to run the exercise. It tested the capabilities of federal, state and local emergency responders ability to coordinate to protect the people in a realistic environment. Well, there is a new twist in Michigan's 2024 Senate race. Democratic Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin facing more competition from her own party as she runs for the seat currently held by Debbie Stabenow. Dearborn businessman Nasser Beydoun just announced his candidacy today. Now, he describes himself as both a business leader and a longtime civil rights champion. Beydoun says he's also the immigrant son of a proud member of the United Auto Workers Union. So far, he is the third person in the Democratic primary, along with Slotkin and attorney Zach Burns of Ann Arbor. Well, we've seen some sunshine this afternoon here in downtown Detroit, but get ready for another cold night. Meteorologist Kim Adams is tracking another freeze warning in our first forecast. Kim? It's deja vu every single day this week. It seems like we've had a freeze warning, another one tonight as temperatures drop down into the 30s. Now, the good thing tonight is the reason we have the freeze warning is because the skies will be mostly clear, which means tomorrow we can look forward to some sunshine. It is warmer today than it was yesterday, by as much as 14 degrees. You just saw temperatures in the low 50s. It's 14 degrees warmer right now than it was at the same time yesterday in Pontiac, 11 degrees warmer in Mount Clemens and also out at Metro Airport. Tomorrow, we expect temperatures to rise pretty quickly. In fact, we'll have increasing clouds, a chance of afternoon showers. Just ignore that Metro Airport. Uh, we will have temperatures for the most part in the mid to upper 50s, but that freeze warning is in effect until 8 a.m tomorrow morning. Then a rainy pattern starts on Friday and we'll talk about that coming up in your forecast. All right. Thank you, Kim. Democrats and Republicans are playing a high stakes game of chicken in the battle over raising the nation's debt ceiling. It's not clear who might blink first, but a new analysis shows the government might not be able to pay its bills as early as June. Kimberly Gill joins us now to run through the new developments, and I understand we could see a vote today. That's right. Karen, good afternoon to you. Uh, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is scrambling to pass a bill through the Republican-controlled House. He says he's willing to raise the debt ceiling, but only if there are some spending cuts included. He's trying to put President Biden and the Democrats on the defensive. But McCarthy is paying a price. He had to make a bunch of last-minute changes to win over conservative members of his own party. Among them, Republicans want to speed up implementation of new work requirements for people on Medicaid and food stamps. They feel it saves money and could help fill open jobs. 
President Biden wants to raise the debt limit without conditions and is waiting to see what legislation passes. The House, the Democratic leader in the Senate, says the bill will be dead on arrival and time is running out. This revised bill is even more extreme, more radical, a more radical version of the Default on America Act. It brings us no closer to avoiding a default on the national debt. President Biden has been missing in action on the debt ceiling, refusing to negotiate and putting our economy and the livelihoods of hardworking American families at risk. And Karen, the House could vote before the day is over. We'll, of course, keep an eye on Capitol Hill and let you know what happens. So Republicans seem pretty confident in terms of passing this bill. Yeah, they do. The House is very closely divided. McCarthy can only afford to lose four votes. Plus, conservative Republicans are signaling they're not willing to budge on their demands, which makes any kind of bipartisan compromise seem very, very tough to reach down the road. But as I said, we'll continue to watch it. And All right. We'll see. see you at five. Yep. Thanks, Kim. Sure. Well, over at the White House, President Biden is focusing on international affairs during a visit with South Korea's president. The two countries are celebrating a 70-year alliance with a big state dinner tonight, and they're doing some critical business as well. The leaders are signing an agreement that includes plans to have U.S. nuclear-armed submarines dock in South Korea for the first time in 40 years. It is a big show of support amid growing concerns about nuclear threats from North Korea. President Biden made it clear the U.S. values this alliance. Ours is a future filled with unimaginable opportunity and endless possibility. Nothing, nothing is beyond our ability to reach when our nations and our people stand united. We have proven that time and again over the last 70 years. More than 28,000 U.S. troops are currently based in South Korea. In case you've ever wondered, there's definitely no age limit on artistic inspiration. Paula Talmud stumbled onto a group of women of a certain age who are showing us just how true that statement can be. This is Blackbird Gallery in the Fisher Theater, and when you walk in, you are immediately engulfed, not only in the colors, but really in a story of resilience and longevity and absolutely relevance. Inside, you'll see Juliet Signius, the first black woman invited to dance with the New York City Ballet. She turned them down and instead joined Alvin Ailey at a time when blacks were told they didn't have the talent or the bodies to be ballerinas. Now 83 years old and living in Ann Arbor, it is her paintbrush that dances across canvas and cloth. The art tells a story and it comes from the soul, it comes from the history, it comes from the heritage. Five artists, all more than 70 years old, showing they are relevant in this space. The name of the show is Women of a Certain Age. And, you know, I kind of grappled with that title. Um, you know, you don't want to call out women's age in any way, but to me it um, exemplifies experience, grace, and beauty. Now, are you age sensitive? Do you mind my knowing? I am very age sensitive. It's a certain age, not the age. <laughs> Carol Mauricio is also showing. Color inspires me. Everything inspires me. It is these women of a certain age defining and refining the eye of the beholder. This is soil that I brought back from Brazil. So I uh, combine, and that is in that piece also. So what I have done is combined the charcoal uh, technique with uh, a use of soil. And believe me, there's no books on how to draw with soil. So it's been all experimental, and um, I learn as I go. Also showing Can Dance Hunter and Asha Walita, and internationally renowned artist Shirley Woodson. Several of her works are in the permanent collection of the Detroit Institute of Arts. This is a rare opportunity to come, see, collect, and marvel at the hands time has touched in order to work perfection. I'm very thrilled. Uh, I love being in a space here that's a, a black-owned gallery with uh, women who I relate to and women who are accomplished and women who are acknowledged by their, uh, by their peers and women who have been validated. Yeah, absolutely. So the Blackbird Gallery is conveniently located right behind me at the Fisher Theater, or I should say the Fisher Building, and they are open on theater nights. And if you're in the New Center area, then stop on in. The show runs, Karen and everybody, through May 19th. And honestly, when I walked in, I actually got goosebumps. It was that good. I want to stop by. All right. Thank you, Paula. Dog owners, 